All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Adeshina again. Well, today what I want to share with you guys is to just give you a snapshot of the magnitude of the volume of information medical students have to learn while they're in medical school. Because a lot of you always hear about, you know, how much information do I really need to know? Like, is it that bad? Is there a lot of information I need to know? Absolutely, guys. You know what? I've got all my notes from my first two years of medical school, and I'm just going to give you a snapshot. So when they tell you you're going to be getting a lot of information coming at the speed of light, they are absolutely right. So how about we take a look, and we, you, this is going to show you that every single page was read, highlighted, and memorized for an exam. All right, check this out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment of truth. This is the first two years of medical school. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a lot of notes, all right? So let's kind of back up so we can see from afar. Here we go. And I'm what I'm going to do is actually zoom into this so you can actually get an appreciation that all these notes are just not pieces of papers. This is different topics. All right, each of them was read and highlighted every single page. As you can see there, that's some MRIs of the brain, okay? So this was genetics. So let's take a look here. This was some of the, my genetics notes, all right? Let's flip down a little bit. As you can see that, every single page highlighted and read, okay? Here we go. This is biochemistry. Okay, every page, every pathway had to be memorized. Okay, the medical school is not easy. It's a lot of information. All right, let's put that to the side a little bit so we can get through all this. So, here's another set of notes. We have ultrasound. All right, this was endocrinology for Okay, every page, notes, written. All right, let's go over a couple more. That's the hypothalamic pituitary axis, which you need to know. All right, every page read, highlighted, read and highlighted. Welcome to medical school. This is the only official video to give you an idea. And we are not, we're just barely scraping the surface. We're just barely scraping the surface. As you can see there, there's a bunch of notes. Okay, this is the disease of the parathyroid. All right, let's, you know what? Let's take, take a good chunk. Well, oh, where we go, what we got here? We have, all right, what do we, we have pharmacology, all right? Those are pharmacology notes that you have to know. Every page highlighted, okay? This is not a joke, guys. You are going to read like you have never read before. You are going to memorize information at the speed of light, okay? This is very important because they don't show you all this information before you start so you know exactly what. This is why medical students are always studying, right? It makes so much sense. Let's take a look again. All right, let's take a big chunk because we've still got a lot of notes to go through, all right? We've got a lot of notes to go through. All right, class of 2012, baby. S-O-M, that's right, that's my name, right there, Dr. Adeshina. All right, so, we've got more notes coming, all right, more notes, every page highlighted, note taken, in and out. Those are some of my other notes from medical school, all right. I'm trying to show you exactly what they're going to be throwing at you because I don't think anybody has been able to show you that the amount of information, they just tell you just so much information to go through. You're like, what do you mean there's so much information? Absolutely. Look, it's mind-boggling. This is just biochemistry, okay? Biochemistry, all right? Let's take another chunk, okay? Because guess what we're still doing? We're just barely halfway through the one stack of notes. All notes, red highlighted, red and highlighted, okay? This is how it comes to you in medical school, okay? This was a genetics lecture, okay? All genetic. Can you see those chromosomes, baby? That's right, okay? This was OMS1. Can you see that? OMS1. That's the first year of medical school. We did OMM, which is osteopathic manipulative medicine, and you can see some of the techniques. You have to read it all, guys. 
so much information so much information all right this is not to scare you this is to show you to become a doctor you have to be the best you have to put in the work okay it is non-stop they come at you and they don't stop I, I got to show you this. Look, look at what we've done. I've just barely got through half of these notes and we are not even done yet. All right. More journals to read. Histology. Okay. This is histology. Every note was read, guys. Not a single one of I read every single one of these notes. Okay. That is, what do you, what do you think this is, guys? Well, we've got the acinal gland, all right? That's basically a cross-section that you have to memorize this for an exam, all right? You have to memorize every single one of them, okay? And take notes, not just memorize them, guys. You got to keep them in your brain because exams are constantly coming, and they're testing you on chapters, okay? This is why medical students tell you, oh, we have, you know, a, a 15-chapter exam. Well, it's true. Why? Because this is what they test you on, folks. While you're learning pharmacology, you're learning biochemistry, you're learning histology. I mean, we're talking about just the first year of medical school, guys. First year. All right. Here we, this is, this is some part of second year because we've got some autonomic nervous system drugs here. Okay. Streptomycin, neomycin. All right. Every note written, highlighted, written and highlighted. And not just highlighted, guys. You have to memorize and know this drug's cold because they are going to test you on the littlest thing. I mean, the literally, they can test you on anything. See, I think I had to make them make some, some of my diagrams here just to show making of action because this caused GI upset in the, you know, gang cycle there, okay? Drugs, that's your all drugs, okay? When you think you're done, there's more. There's more. So just keep coming. Welcome to another section. What do we got here? All right, clinical nutrition. This is all just nutrition notes. If you think this is a joke, guys, here we go. Highlighted, memorized. Hi highlighted, memorized. When I mean thousands of pages to learn, it's not a joke. You're in drinking from a fire hose. That is the description of medical school. Drinking from a fire hose, okay? We are just barely, let's see again. We are just barely getting by. We are not even there yet. First year of medical school. It's kind of mixed together. This is pathology, okay? This is a a, a cross-section of an atherosclerotic plaque in medical school, okay? And then you think you're done? No, we got more notes. All right, this is anatomy, extensor carpi or naris, all right? A highlighted, okay? There's always good days, too, because we got a fat of Christmas. But guess what? Let's keep going. There's more to come. There's more and more and more. This is geriatrics. This is second year of medical school, okay? And this is what medical students have to memorize. Every page highlighted, written, and you just gonna, you, you're just you not even going to read it once. You have to read it at least twice, even if you can't get to it three times before the exam because the information is non-stop. It's mind-boggling, okay? All right, let's go over it again. More notes, more notes. This is legal issues in psychiatry. I mean, I mean, we're talking about restrictive lung disease. Why you, you know, while you're learning psychiatry, you're also learning pulmonology. See that? Here we go. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. More notes. Every note highlighted, written. Okay. This is not one of those. Oh, maybe it's just a bunch of stacks of papers. No, 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 no. The exams are hard, and you have to know them cold. They will test you in any line. They, let me give you a perfect example. All right. So let's say you're reading, you're reading this page in medical school, and you said, "Oh, maybe what? Well, I don't really care about this graph." And guess what? On the exam, they're gonna put one of the differential for COPD. All right. Do you have COPD, asthma, and they might just test you on alpha one, alpha one, antitrypsin. And you just learn COPD and asthma, man, you're out, all right? Because they're going to test you on practically. You look at that graph and say, oh, what is the effect of exercise on hyperinflation? Maybe I don't have to memorize that. And you'd be surprised they'll test you because they're going to have increased residual volume over time. And that might be the question in medical school. Or even FEV1 divided by FVC has to be less than 70%. If you don't know that number, 70%, you might, you might just show up on the exam and be shocked. That is the detail that they teach us in medical school. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is another lecture, all right? Pulmonary system, all right? Pathophysiology, notes, handwritten, highlighted, okay? I want to show you guys because I don't think there's any video out there that can actually allow you to see, all right? I'm going to just try to go through this a little bit faster so we can have a better idea. See that? More and more notes. The over 10,000 pages, over 10,000 pages, anatomy. Okay, every single organ system will be taught to you in medical school. Now, we're just done. We just finished one set. All right, let's take it good. Just realize 
this imagine this let's imagine this is just first year of medical school and now we got to the next set and this is not textbooks included guys this is just notes all right this is some anatomy lectures and you see pictures you better know those pictures cold because they will they will test you on anything all right those emissary veins that are also known as the uh, right in the brain uh, around the dura matter they will test you on it because that's how people develop subdural hematomas subdural hematomas all right let's see if, how fast we can go through this notes there's more to come okay here we've got the structure of the brain they want you to know all these parts of the brain because that's how they're going to test you in the anatomy lab all right what else do we got okay more x-rays you better know those x-rays cold this is not a joke guys this is why medical school is hard all right sometimes students don't understand the magnitude all right today we're gonna see the magnitude of the volume of information when we talk about information overload welcome to the information overload department okay all right let's take another good angle at this so we can go through all these notes here we go highlighted every single page highlighted all right so let's stack it to the side again see we can get more so we can get a better idea idea okay they're gonna go through lectures within they cover one lecture an hour in medical school folks one lecture an hour and a lecture could be 200 slides long guess who's got to go home and memorize all this stuff you better be sitting down at home reading and understanding and try to memorize it all at the same time okay more lecture notes more notes okay i figured you know what this would be the best thing for me to be able to show you all uh, right this is pediatrics i like to kind of separate my lecture into different chapters all right pediatrics lectures and you better you are going to be tested all right you you as the, as the medical student you have to memorize this stuff all right you got to know them cold because it's exam after exam after exam all right and i'm still i'm still barely peeling this pages off guys i'm still barely peeling the pages off see all right now let's see there's a bunch of notes from med school all right from neuro neuroscience and i'm just trying to give you an idea of all the information i had to memorize while i'm in medical school this is renal physiology and when you think you're done no there's more for you to learn there is more for you to learn this is what makes medical school very challenging because nobody ever shoots videos to show you look more and more information it never stops we are still going we are still going okay all right let's peel some of it off so maybe you guys don't understand all right let's pull this to the side more notes to read more and more and more and more and more all right endocarditis all right here's what trichomonas welcome to microbiology you are going to learn names of bugs that you have never heard in your life okay like mycoplasma pneumonia cryptococcus neoformans language you've never seen before this is acute myeloid leukemia that's hematology all right let's put that to the side a little bit all right we are still not done i'm still flipping guys still flipping still flipping all right more notes more and you think every, yeah they were all read this is too i'm just showing you so you can see that every page was read and highlighted all right folks let's now get a good view and kind of back it up a little bit so we can see there we go all right more notes more notes more notes now remember this i just notes this are just notes guys all right this is just notes. Now we have also books you still have to read. And I'm talking about this is just the first year, first and second year of medical school. All right. That's what makes medical school very, very challenging. But it's not impossible because only the best of the best can do it. You have to put in the work. You must be ready to grind it out. You know, it's almost like you're drinking out of the fire hose. But remember, this is what's going to make you into a physician. All right. They don't just make ordinary people do this. They want people who are the best and who can actually learn this information, understand it and digest it. But for me, I just want to encourage you that you can't give up. Right. Despite the fact that I just shown you the magnitude of what you are going to need to know when you get there. But because that's the journey ahead, that's just the first two years. Second two years, more books. 
This is even minus your board exam. This is minus the USMLE Step 1 or the Comlex Level 1 exam, Comlex Level 2 or USMLE Step 2 CK or CS, which now they're gonna condense all this information into a huge book and they're gonna test you on a lot of questions and it's even more integrated. What they're gonna expect you to do on that board exam is to take all this information and basically synthesize it into one. All right, you've learned about pediatrics, anatomy, nutrition, pathology. You've learned about biochemistry. And on that board exam, they want you to not reintegrate everything together because we are just talking about the human body, baby. Just human body, baby. All right, but what I want you to know is that you can do it. All right, you can't give up. This is not to scare you. This is to prepare you for what's coming. This is to prepare you for the war that's coming. But when it comes, you know you better be ready, baby. I know you guys are gonna be ready for it, all right? That means when you're working hard on your MCAT and you just try to get into medical school, guess what, that's just the tip of the iceberg. What's coming is basically a rock. And you better be ready to climb Everest, because this is what it is. But remember, in the end, when you finish medical school and you graduate and you have a doctorate to get behind your name, an MD or a DO, all right, and then you and then you go to residency and then you get more training and then you graduate and become a doctor and you sit at that bedside and you tell Mrs. Jimmy or Mr. Jimmy or, or, or Bob and say, sir, my name is Dr. Adish and I'll be your doctor today. Uh, it's because you have gone through all this training. And just like it's so hard and difficult to make diamonds or even make gold because of the pure amount of work that has to go into it, that is the same way you are gonna be molded. We're gonna shape you, we're gonna change you, we're gonna reverse your thinking, we're gonna make you think like a doctor. All right, you're gonna have the knowledge, the tools, the skill set to be able to take care of a human being when they're sitting by your bedside and you're just asking them questions, you're resynthesizing all this information you learned in medical school saying, oh, is this an endocrine problem? Is this an infectious disease problem? Is it microbiology? I think this might be just like you're in septic shock. Okay, this patient just has pharyngitis. They have otitis media. All right, you can spit that out of the dime of a hat because after 11, almost seven or eight years of training and learning all this information, they finally lost them together. And when patients come and talk to you, you say, yes, we can take care of you. I'm here to help you get better. And it's a humbling experience for me even to be able to graduate and also be able to help my patients and tell them, hey, listen, this is what I think is wrong with you. Or then you got to see a specialist. You got to go to a cardiologist, you got to go to an endocrinologist, or give them to the right person who can take good care of them and do the best I can at the bedside. And I want to encourage you that you also can do it. It's a long journey, but when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, and only the best is reserved for those who are willing to pay the price. Thank you very much. You have a guys, so have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. Dr. Adishino, take care.